Tackle today, the Justice Brothers from Tackle Trading, bringing you all the charts, the news, the analysis, so you can start your day informed. We got some tensions over in Russia, Ukraine area. Walmart delivers earnings, uh, charts, uh, you know, pulling back, navigating. Listen, we have a fantastic pro community that we help walk through all of these situations. Uh, it is a community that I cannot say enough good things. Not about us coaches. We do our job. Just the members in the community are fantastic. You can become a part of that community by going to TackleTrading.com, signing up for a 15-day free trial to see uh, if you do agree with me. I have a feeling you will. Matt, you know, the tensions in the markets right now, like, you know, you had a pullback. When I uh, woke up this morning, I was like, oh, markets, you know, what's going on? What's going on? Uh, here, two hours later, three hours later, uh, looks just like another day in a pull get back navigating the situation. Yeah, uh, from a technical perspective, you just see this as a bullish retracement in between the pockets of the 9 EMA and the 20 SMA, and you know exactly what you need to see from a market perspective. You need to see the market get back up above the 9 EMA. It's really, really simple when you when you aren't in a retracement from a pure technical perspective, removing all the information that uh, seem seemingly comes into the market on a day-in, day-out basis, you're really seeing this from a technical perspective more than anything. And, and when you're in that pocket between the 9 and the 20, you're really talking about the creation uh, of support, support building at that 20 period moving average, and then ultimately that concept of confirmation, which would be above that 9 EMA that you're seeing on the S&P 500. And when you're looking at some of the overnight action, you, you obviously did have a little bit of selling behavior over the, over, over the you know, course of the last 12 hours or so on the futures market. You can certainly see that volatility a little bit more as it tested underneath that 20 period moving average. By the time the cash open did occur, it kind of recovered its price action. A lot of that downward pressure in price was due to the European hours. As you can see on the chart right here, that big downward movement in price on the 15 minute chart, that's the European cash open that happens right about three o'clock in the morning on the East Coast. And when that occurred, you saw that downward pressure in price. But ever since the cash open occurred right here, you got that up, 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 really kind of alleviating that uh, potential concern to really kind of keep the pattern that we're looking at in the S&P 500, that bullish retracement, building support at the 20 period moving average, that pattern, that retracement still alive and well, because the cash open came out this morning and supported the price action. And so you're still looking at an improving condition over the last couple of uh, trading sessions from an overall technical perspective, but you're still navigating that pullback. We have not seen confirmation as of yet, just seeing a little bit of slowing momentum yesterday. And from the cash open here today, you are seeing a little bit of slowing momentum as well. Taking into account the 24 hour wick, Obviously, a little bit concerning, but overall, still navigating that bullish retracement in the market. Yeah, I know, I know. And a lot of charts, I would point out other charts, but uh, they all look the same. You know, Russell, industrials, things that had been pulling back, right? Fighting back, right? Fighting back. The queue is just absolutely uh, as boring as you can be when I think there's any volatility in the entire world. And uh, that bid, Matt, today was has been relentless. Uh, you, you know, you start out and it has been relentless all day long, all day long. Uh, it's been a very impressive uh, cash open early, early from, market. From session. the cash open, it has been supported. And that obviously is a positive thing. But once again, have not seen confirmation here either. You've seen improving conditions following the volatility from late last week. You're seeing slowing momentum. That is a very positive sign going into a retracement. But at the end of the day, retracements are not confirmed until we get that upward movement in price that confirms above the previous day's high. And when you're talking about that 9 EMA working underneath that 9 EMA, you got to take into account the 9 EMA from a confirmation perspective as well. Uh, wisdom indeed there were no economic uh, reports of significance couple housing reports that the market literally did not care about came in line with expectations we've highlighted this is not an economic week uh, we'll have those economic weeks in the future this is a technical week at the start of an OPEC cycle uh, as we head into a positive seasonality period uh, Matt I am all about that retracement that confirmation uh, and uh, we will uh, be right on top of it when it occurs uh, 
micro news, Walmart. I was very curious about what Walmart's earnings, uh, how'd they do? Yeah, Walmart did really good in the quarter and had came out with beats against EPS. They beat on the uh, revenue side of the equation. The EPS beat was about 9.4%, which is better than the average market beat we saw this earnings season. Revenue came in about $2.5 billion above the expectation. $169.59 billion was the revenue handle. Let me say that again. $169.59 billion was the revenue handle. One hundred sixty-seven point five billion was the expectation. So a good beat against revenue. Revenue is up 5.5% year over year as well. They do officially raise guidance. However, the guidance was just a slight uptick in guidance. And, and it was interesting how Walmart described that. They basically stated that people buy more than just food at Walmart, and thus they are raising their forward-looking guidance. Now, on that guidance, like I said, just a little bit of a, a, a slight guidance upgrade as, you, as we see uh, Walmart go up by about 0.6% on the revenue side of the equation and right about 1.4% on the EPS uh, for next quarter as well. On the technical side of the equation, you're talking about a breakout. Uh, Walmart's been in just a juggernaut trend, just absolutely beautiful trend on that weekly chart. Does not seem to be slowing down as you break out of the of the daily chart as well here. Uh, Walmart's so Walmart continues its juggernaut trend. Let's move on and let's talk a little bit about Lowe's here today. As Lowe's does report EPS beat of two point five percent, revenue beat uh, was very small, uh, just uh, about about 300 million against a two, uh, $20 billion expectation. Revenue was actually down 1.47% year over year, and they reaffirmed forward-looking guidance. A little bit of a gap down on a mixed report out of lows. And when the market is a doji today, you're going to have some stocks down, some stocks up. Walmart up on a hat trick, lows down on a little bit of a mixed report. Uh, that makes some sense to me on any day that ends in Y. From a technical perspective, keep an eye on 260. That's a pivot formation of support on the daily chart. You break that, you should see a little bit more downward pressure in price until you find the next level of support. And then let's talk a little bit about food-based company, Archer Daniels Midland Tears. They do report an inline EPS. Revenue is actually- I, I, I laughed. I was like, where's the earnings reaction? <laughs> none, none. <laughs> none, 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 <laughs> none here. We, in, in fact- in an, I Seriously, Matt, my eyes went to the top and the bottom of the chart. I'm like, where's the candle? And I'm like, oh, it's right there. It's 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 right there, like you just had another day, right? But it, it, when you're looking at Archer Daniels, really kind of a you know walk in the park type report here. Uh, they come in line on EPS revenue was a slight miss, very slight miss. Revenue was down about eight percent year over year. I'm willing to bet if this was at the top end of the trend, you're probably talking about a gap down. But you're not at the top of the trend. You don't have that same expectations when you're at the very very low part uh, point on a trend. And that's where Archer Daniels is, as they do have a mixed report. Now, they did officially, uh, on the guidance side of the equation, reaffirm forward-looking guidance. This is an interesting uh, bottoming formation that's taken a little bit of time. You have a real good support level right around that $50 level of support. It's trying its best to reverse. We'll see if it can actually come through. The completion of reversal analysis is that really just started on Archer Daniels. But a mixed report coming from the low point was uh, was was enough to uh, uh, stabilize the the price at the low point. Yeah, listen, uh, you know, we, let's uh, let's go let's go to gold. Uh, so you know, and I want to get your take on this. Uh, I'm sure a lot of our community wants to get your take on this. So the headlines were all about like uh, Russia, you know, you know, signed Putin signed the the decree saying that, listen, in the case of not just nuclear attack, but a conventional attack, we are allowed to use nuclear weapons. You know, that caused a little bit of a stir, right? Uh, Ukraine has launched, you know, some missiles, uh, U.S.-made missiles on a military institution in Russia. What's your take on this situation? We're getting a typical, like, you know, gold bid, but we were getting that bid starting yesterday. What's your take on this situation? You know, honestly, I'm not seeing anything too abnormal from a charting perspective on gold. You're talking about a bearish retracement on the short term pullback, you know, on the long term side of the equation. The dollar really isn't doing much here today. A little bit of, you know, wide range volatility on the dollar. But that's the, you're looking basically at a candle that has a, a doji type candle here today. 
Um, quite frankly, I think the dollar and gold are both telling the truth of the scenario here today because you saw uh, you saw headlines coming into the market this morning fairly aggressively about Putin saber rattling with the nuclear side of the equation. Mark, you know, I don't want to you know talk that language down because anytime you see a leader of one of the few countries around the world that has nuclear weapons that talks about the utilization of u- nuclear weapons, you got to take it serious. But at the end of the day, you also, from a market perspective, know Putin has done this before multiple different times over the course of the Ukrainian-Russian conflict. Anytime America has seemingly given weapons to help Ukraine defend their defend their country a little bit, you know, better. We we saw this same thing with the F-16s. Putin came out and did the saber rattling over nuclear warfare. Did that occur? No. Did Putin come out and do the exact same thing over uh, the the nuclear, you know, utilization of nuclear you know weapons in the Ukrainian conflict? given the fact that the U.S. is allowing missiles to, you know, hit inside Russian territory. Yes, Putin did that exact same thing. But I think the dollar's got it right here, showing you that, yeah, that's a concern, but is it really something out there? I think that's what the market is calling a little bit of a bluff here today. I think that's why you're seeing the cash open, the market uh, cash open get supported, because this is not the first or the second or the third time we have seen this storyline in the Ukrainian-Russian conflict over the last three and a half years. Yeah, no, that's great analysis. Um, you know, and you know, it's a technical thing for me now for gold, right? It would be nice. Please don't V-shape silver. Break down the commodity technicals for us. Um, it, it's a technical thing for me too. And again, it's not that the news is not important. That's not what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to suggest that this news coming into the market today, when you're seeing a smaller candle range on the S&P, when you're seeing smaller candle ranges on gold, when you're seeing smaller candle ranges on the dollar in an environment where we've seen nothing but volatility in those areas of the market, I think the market is calling a little bit of the bluff here today, uh, the same way we've seen over time. From a technical perspective, you're absolutely right. These are technical conversations. Uh, you're overextended in the, in the dollar. You're starting to see the b- very beginnings of pattern development here. The pattern you, you are seeing right this very second is a bullish flag-based pattern against a momentum uptrend coming into resistance. That is a concerning chart when you're looking at the commodity space. But that is the very beginning point of other forms of analysis as well, because you don't start getting into the deeper pullback conversation unless you start navigating a shallow retracement in the market. You don't start talking about slowing momentum until you see the beginnings of of. of of resistance and these patterns that start to develop. And so we're in the process of developing the bearish retracement on gold versus the bullish retracement on the dollar. And it's at this point, we'd like to start to see double tops against 107 or either or a little bit of a deeper pullback like we've seen in the market itself. You don't have to go too far to understand what I'm talking about. Once you give up that 90 EMA, you've officially given up the momentum of that trend. You've given up the momentum of those patterns. We've seen that in the market. That's why we're talking about the the you know concept of support builds and confirmation and upward movements in price and being a little bit patient as we navigate this pullback in the marketplace. I think you can rinse and repeat if, if you're looking at the commodity space and you're saying, all right, we need to start to see some topping action happening in the dollar. Well, are we starting to see the very early signs of that? Of course. But those are just very early signs. And quite frankly, when you're still talking about a bullish trend in a in a bullish momentum environment and a bullish flag based pattern, which is a momentum pattern, you're you're still going to be tapping on the brakes on the commodity side until you start to see, you know, a little bit of that deeper pullback or quite frankly, what I would love to see is a double tap against 107 and start talking about reversals. Yeah, uh, great analysis. Uh, Matt, give me I bit. Give me I bit. They have options. Uh, you know, like do do do. This is a a moment where a lot of uh, traders, to say the least, especially cash flow traders, uh, have been waiting for. I bit uh, has options today, Matt. Uh, that is not a small thing. You know, the uh, highest volume uh, ETF by a mile in the uh, crypto space on a product that, uh, oh, I don't know, might have been uh, catching a few traders' eyes in the last little bit. 
Uh, I just wanted to celebrate that moment. I just and, wanted and, to. And, yeah, it's a it's a it's a good moment for the ETFs on crypto and and specifically Bitcoin. And you're seeing a little bit of oversized price movement on Bitcoin in, in comparison not to the previous movements in price. Obviously, we've been dealing with momentum environments here, but in comparison to Ethereum, a little bit, but just a little bit here today. Still looking at the bullish retracement on on ethereum and still tracking that uh high base type fading moment momentum on bitcoin itself it just looks like bitcoin's on this journey to tag a hundred thousand before you get into any significant pattern development quite frankly that's why i like ethereum a little bit more from the pattern development coming from the low point uh, you and i are going to continue these conversations in depth with our community here just in a little bit Come join it. The Trader's Lounge is a fantastic place to spend an hour, hour and 50 minutes. Get your questions uh, answered. Ask any question you want. Uh, TackleTrading.com. Go sign up for that 15 free trial today.